Good afternoon, everybody, or should I say good morning for those of you that are traveling or on the West Coast. I am excited to be able to spend some time with my friend Mark Bachos today. And let me first of all offer up an apology for some technical challenges we had on Tuesday. And as Mark and I have discussed, technology is such a blessing when it is working right. <laughs> and it's, of course, a challenging when it's not going your way. But we are professionals and we are having fun. We're trying to make the best of this situation. And so I'm really glad to be able to have Mark join us today. Mark, thank you for being a part of our interview series. Why don't you tell everybody a little bit about who you are and about what you're passionate about? Uh Dave, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Uh, it's an honor to be on uh, with you. Uh, I do want to. I do want to first pay you a compliment. Actually, um, I think that this the concept of having an interview series during a lunch time hour. I think is actually a brilliant idea. So kudos to you for coming up with such a great idea on such an awesome topic at such a perfectly. Uh, allocated time. So thank you for having me on and, 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 uh, and kudos to you for, for the idea of, of doing this. Thank you. You're so gracious, Mark. So tell us <laughs> about yourself and quit talking sure. about me. <laughs> sure, sure. So, um, so I am a classic Myers-Briggs ENFJ, which is colloquially known as the teacher. And so that'll tell you a little bit about what I'm passionate about. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about the important things. I'm, I'm married to a superhero woman. Been, we've been married, we've been together more, more than 20 years and married about 18 of those. Uh, we have two uh, remarkable girls. Uh, one is a teenager and one is a tweenager. Ooh. So navigating that aspect of their, their, their that time of your, their life is an incredible experience actually. Uh, and I'm not saying that to be facetious. It really is incredible to watch them grow. Um, what I do to pay bills is um, I actually work for Noblis, which is um, a company that does advanced research and development and direct mission support for the government. So that's what pays the bills. Um, but for the purpose of this, this time, one of the highlights of my early career was that I got to actually be on the speaking circuit for about a year, touring with authors and big time life coaches and, and thinkers from the mid 90s. Um, and, you know, at the beginning of what we know today is the internet. So I actually was speaking about that technology at that time and actually talking about things like PowerPoint before, you know, when it was still like 2.0 and I was actually giving talks on how to give talks using this new technology. So it was pretty cool. Um, I'm also a student. Uh, I'm actually doing a, a post, some postmasters work actually at Cornell University on, in data science and data analytics. Um, so, so you, I, the thing I'm really passionate about, uh, as you can tell, is actually is learning and making that available to other people. So something else that I do in all of my vast spare time is I host a podcast uh, called the LifeWorks Podcast, where I share uh, lessons that I've learned and observed, um, and I also uh, do interviews as well. Mark, that is fascinating. It's amazing to be able to see the energy you have to be able to handle the focus on work, be able to build your own practice in terms of a life and what we call business strategist, raising two girls, by the way. I have one in college, and so I know how challenging and thrilling and exciting that can be. But then also doing this podcast, and what led you to starting this podcast? And what really is the crux of what you're trying to accomplish through your podcast? It all kind of started in high school. I'm going, to tell, I'm going to tell a very, very quick story. When I was in high school, I was a dork, okay? And I'm okay. going to tell you how dorky I was. So a friend of mine and I, who is equally dorky, I, I will not call his na name out, you know, uh, here on, on Facebook, but um, he and I would get together on Friday nights, and we would order a pizza, and we would listen to classical music. This is very dorky, believe me. And we would just get, sit and talk about life. And, you know... And it definitely kept us out of trouble for sure. But, but one of the things I realized was I really enjoyed learning and talking about life and what works in, in life. Um, and, you know, and so, so this is just, it's kind of part of my personality. I, I, love, I love talking, especially one-on-one -on -one with people. Um, but I think what really led to this was, is that I've been working 
for a staggering number of years. And I will tell you, it's actually 37 years that I've been working, which if you look at me, the math doesn't quite work, but it's actually true. I actually started working when I was eight years old. So that gave me about a 10 year um, edge on all of my peers from a work perspective. That said, when you've, when you've been working for close to 40 years and you've lived for about that time too, you, you see a lot, right? And you experience a lot and you observe a lot. And I've, I've certainly done all of that. And I said, I need a way to channel all of this, to channel all these lessons learned, all these observations, and just, just what I've observed that of, of what works both in life and in business. Um, but not only that, it also gives me a platform to give the microphone to some, someone else mm. to share about their expertise and their lessons learned. So this is something I've actually started this, doing this year, um, is actually doing kind of like this format, um, you know, Zoom-based interviews where, you know, we're doing it face-to-face. -face. And so what ends up happening, what I, what I end up doing is I end up posting the videos to, to YouTube and then posting the... Uh, the, the podcast, the audio to iTunes. So my audience can actually, depending on what they want, whether they prefer video or they prefer audio while they're doing the dishes or whatever, um, then they, they get, they get it both ways. So, um, and, and I think another thing that really kind of really propelled me in this direction was that I felt like right now the world is losing its mind <laughs> and and, and the, the perspectives in the media are extraordinarily one-sided or the other sided, if you know what I mean. They're, they're very polarized. And I just felt like, man, I, I, need to, I need to make sense of all of this for myself. And, and you know, so let me bring on some guests that are interesting that, and that can provide some good context, something we are sorely missing, um, bring, bring good context to some of the, the big issues that you know we're facing today. Like, so I'll give you an example. Um, one of my early interviews was with a sociologist, uh, Maricela Cola, and she was able to give some perspective on the Black Lives Matter movement um, and, and, and why, why it is taking prominence today. Um, another interview that I did was um, shortly thereafter was actually with a, a friend of mine who's an African-American um, and retired police officer with uh, the Alexandria, Virginia Police Department. And he was able to, and this was all around the time that George Floyd was, was going down and, and the Rayshard uh, Brooks case was happening. And so he was actually able to provide, you know, a, an African-American perspective, but also the police perspective as well. So I'm, I'm getting these really interesting people talking about some really interesting and relevant topics um, to, to just provide some added, some added context and background and critical thinking to, to, to the narrative that, is, that exists today. And it's just, it's been amazing and fun and, um, and feeds so much in me for learning and being able to make that learning available to other people. I love that, Mark. And I'll say that in listening to the podcast, and at the very end, we're going to give everyone an opportunity to be able to find out how to get a hold of you. But I will say this, I've really been intrigued by the guests you've had on and I love it. And it, it, it kind of makes me feel like you, you don't just go listen to a podcast just for someone's opinion. You're going literally to your podcast, you're getting experts, you're getting people that are subject matter experts that really have great insights and they're giving their opinions. And I really liked your podcast. I mean, it's really challenging me to think about how to take my podcast up or not. So, I want to thank you for that. Let me ask you this, Mark, and maybe for the rest of the, the group here, you've been a speaker for a long time. What would you say is the most difficult challenge or difficult part of being a speaker? My, my kids tease me that I give them a, a speech or multiple speeches every day. So, and, and, and I tell them, well, that's my job. I'm a dad. You know? <laughs> but I think for, for me personally, because I've been speaking a long time and, and because I have a... I have a penchant or a love for context and providing context. I think I tend to, I tend to, to provide a little bit too much. I think, you know, some people just say, look, man, just get to the point. right. Just give me the bullet points, <laughs> you know, and, and, and I'll give you the bullet points, but I will also want to give you why those bullet points exist and where those bullet points come from and how we arrived at those bullet points. So I, for me, I believe people need context, but not, I'm learning in audience analysis that that's not always the case. So my personal challenge is 
brevity and conciseness. And I'll leave it there so I can actually put that into practice. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it, Mark. Uh, let me ask you this, in the years you've been speaking, you probably even through your coaching have come across clients that need some support in this arena of what we call speaker anxiety. What are some mm -hmm. of the strategies or some of the techniques that you've implemented either for yourself or that you've given to your clients? It, th this is, it, it's, it's the million dollar question, right? I think it. I think it really is in in, in a couple of different. There, there are a couple of answers to that. Uh, let me tell you a, just a quick story about two kids in in a, at a swim meet. All right. So my kids used to be in competitive swimming when we had competitive swimming, uh, pre-COVID, and I was a timer on the starting blocks. And the first kid comes up and he's like, you know, just frumpy dumpy, right? I mean, he's sagging. He's down. His shoulders are slumped. And, and he, he's literally saying out, out you know, to himself, you know, out loud, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to come in last. You know, I, this is just, I didn't do well in practice this week. I am coming in last today. He literally said this outside, out, out, you know, out loud um, you know, to, for all of us to hear. And you can imagine what happened, right? Uh, so another kid comes up. Same team, same coach, same socioeconomic status, same neighborhood. I mean, like everything's, this, they could have literally, literally been the same kid, but he's like doing the, the neck thing, Michael Phelps, and he's just like pumped. And he was, this, this second kid was going to go into the most Spartan swimming event of all of them. And he said, I'm going to crush my time today. Okay. Mm. And you know what happened? I mean, you already know the end of the story. The kid the kid dropped 16 seconds in his event, 16, which is unheard of in, in swimming. If you drop like two seconds, that's like amazing. This yeah. kid dropped 16 seconds and I believe took first in his, in his heat, first or second. So, so the first thing is that we have to go into any speaking engagement, telling ourselves the story of the second kid, right? That we, we've got to tell ourselves, I'm going to crush it. If we say, I'm nervous, I, you know, they know more than me, you know, I, I, I'm not a very good speaker, guess what's going to happen? You know, it, so it all starts in the story that we tell ourselves. Mm, I love that. Mm. I think that's so true, Mark. It is a mindset issue, isn't it? It's about what we tell ourselves. Uh, if we're convinced with what we tell ourselves, and if we believe that our presentation is going to be successful and that we're going to be able to convey our message in a way that's going to hit the audience, then that's going to actually help us to actually what I would call perform better. And yes. maybe we will cross that finish line first. And I, I don't know, the shaving 16 seconds, that's a, that, ooh, that's amazing. I don't know how he did that. He's getting trained yeah. by Michael Phelps. That's what he's doing. Yeah, he, must, <laughs> he, must, he must have been. But I, I think the other, the other aspect of this, uh, of, of overcoming speaker anxiety is over preparation. Mm. Let me give you another example. My my kids and I in a few weeks are doing are, are singing at a at a benefit a, 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 for a local musical theater um, company, and um, and so we and and I'm the only parent <laughs> who's doing this. It's all kids, but I'm the only parent because you know I get to bond with my kids over this. So so we picked the song and we ran this song before the audition, mind you, before the audition. 90 times oh before the, this is before we even get the chance to just to get to see if we can actually do it right. 90 times before the audition. So, so what happened in the audition was now I'm, you know, I, I do have a bit of a musical background as you know. Um, but, but when I got in, it's been a little while. Um, and I was prepared. My kids were fine. They're pros. But actually for me, I actually got nervous. I got nervous in the middle of the, of the audition and, and the adrenaline kicked in. And when the adrenaline kicks in, funny things happen. You know, like, you know, your brain shuts down and you just, you, you wanna fight or flight, you wanna literally run off stage or just speed up so that, you know, you finish the song faster. And I could feel it. But what happens is, and, and what happens when we get nervous is that we default to what's in our nervous system, right? So, um, so, so, so what we have to do is we have to over-prepare, 
that, that's, that's the point is we practiced the song 90 times so that when I got nervous, um, I w it wouldn't show, but that I would default back to what's already in my, in my nervous system. And so, so for people who, who say, okay, I've, I've done my, I've, I've made my PowerPoint, I'm done. Mm -hmm. No, that you're only 50% done. <laughs> you're at the, end of your, at the end of your development. Now you have to actually practice it. So it's over, I think two things. One, it's, it's, the, it's the story that you tell yourself. And second, it's absolutely, there's just no way around it. There's no magic bullet, you know, for, for over preparation. Yeah, and I, and I love that you said that, Mark. I think people ask all the time, what do you do or what can you do to make sure you're preparing yourself or setting yourself up for success? And I tell them, you've got to put in the time and prepare. The better off you are in terms of understanding your material, knowing what you're going to go, go through or what we call the run through, yep. the power of visualization, you're going to be more successful. Uh, by Absolutely. the way, um, uh, Andrea Sams and Jeff Fricks both say hello. Uh, <laughs> Hi, guys. Great to, great to see you. Yeah, I've had, I've had the privilege of having Jeff on before, and he shared more from his perspective as a sales leader, which was fantastic. I saw it. Good, good. So tell me I about a great. recent talk you've had, Mark, because you do presentations all the time. But tell me about a recent talk you've had where you felt like you're able to connect with the audience or at least that you felt like the audience connected with your message and how do you, how, how was the difference doing it virtually than doing it let's say live so i have a really great story about that because i actually about once a quarter maybe once every six weeks i actually give a talk about giving talks to uh to to local universities uh so and i actually call it rock star presentations and i, I have a very easy framework ready set rock Okay, that's my three points. Um, so ready is all about preparation. Set is all about the practicing. And then rock is just, you're just delivering and answering questions. So, so this is a really fascinating case study in trying to give a talk about giving talks virtually, okay? To a college audience of about 40, okay? So, so, um, I, I, it, what, was, what was really fascinating about this is that I had to completely change the format for my talk because previously it was in PowerPoint, it's me getting up in front of the class. And if I wanted to bore them to death, um, I could have just delivered that. But I had to really change, I mean, I had to alter it completely for the virtual format because there's so much you have to overcome, you know, in this format. Um, so I, what I did was I changed it and I actually... I opened the, the talk, um, now again, this is about giving presentations. So the first three words that flash up on the screen very slowly is worst speech ever. Okay, so, so <laughs> then, I, then I go over to a YouTube video uh, of, uh, of Phil Davison. He's a, he's a, a, a local po politician in Minerva, Ohio. Uh, you, can, you can Google him, Davison, not Davidson, but Davison. Um, and and it, it, it's, it is an internet classic uh, where he, he basically gives a speech and he's literally the example of what not to do in a, in a, in a talk. And it's just, it's hilarious i mean it was so it was such a, a sensation he was like on good morning america the next day i mean he was on commercials and television i mean just it was just uproarious i wanted it steered into their consciousness um so, so that they would know what not to do in a talk um and i'll tell you it was so it was so captivating and it, it you know and and i presented my my very simple you know approach to to putting together a compelling talk and then, and I thought, well, I mean, they're going to be done because, you know, the, the online format is actually kind of exhausting after, after a, a while. Um, they were on, and, and I've given it several times, you know, since changing to, to virtual and without fail. I mean, they're online asking questions an hour and a half after I've finished. The mm -hmm. talk I give is probably a half hour or so, you know, maybe 40 minutes. Uh, but, but then after that, they're like, they're on, they're asking questions. I mean, it's, it's really... Um, it's been an interesting case study for me in how to deliver a talk effectively 
uh, through, through using virtual means. Another thing that I use as well is something called Mentimeter. It's basically used for like online polling, right? And you can use your you can use your phone, you can use your device, you can use your computer, you know. And you can you can have quizzes, you can have competitions and things like that. So um, it's an awesome tool to really engage people in, in a virtual format. Because what ends up happening is you know you have this, the, the 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 talking head, and you can just lose people. They can turn tune out and you know go do something else. Even while they're there, they'll listen to you passively, but they, you know they might not be listening to you. But Mentimeter is a really good tool for, or something like it, it for, for really engaging people, you know, while you're in a virtual format. So those are some of the things I've used uh, to, to try to create a more captivating experience, especially in this virtual environment. What I love about that, Mark, is just so everybody knows, I've had the privilege of being able to sit in one of Mark's presentations, and it really keeps the audience engaged because they feel like they're doing something. You know, when you're presenting live, you get that feedback. You get the sense of how to fuel energy and you get energy from your audience. When you're virtual, that's really non-existent. And when you implemented that tool, Mentimeter, it really gave the audience ability to engage with each other, engage with you. You were able to take their results of the polling, share it back. It, it keeps them captivated. So I really appreciate you giving that example and really sharing that insight, Mark. Um, let me ask you this question, and, and before we get into this other one, I have to ask you, when you think about the messages you craft, yeah. and you think about the podcast episodes, how do you come up with these ideas, or how do you craft these messages to make sure that it's not just in your head, but you're able to put it out there in a way that can be uh, really received in a way that your audience can take it and run with it? From a speaking perspective, and, and I think that's where I, I'll focus here, is you always begin, I always begin with the audience. It always starts with the audience. A lot of times what we do as speakers and experts is we say, I've got a topic and I'm going to present on the topic, right? And we go and we present or we put out the, we put out the, <laughs> the podcast episode or whatever, or we give the talk and it misses the mark. Ooh. And a lot of times it misses the mark because what we had in our heads and what the audience needed, what you know, were two different things and there's a chasm between those two. In speaking, um, you know, what I do is I always, I look at the audience, right? You know, what's the, and I look at everything about them, their age, where they are, you know, uh, in, in terms of location, where they come from, what they already know about the topic, um, you know, education level, you know, th those kind of things. And ultimately, what is it that they need? And sometimes I actually have to ask the, 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 the course organizer or, 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 you know, some student representative or a focus group or something like that, you know, what is it that this audience needs? And then, and, and once they provide me that answer, then I can really begin crafting my message. You know, it all begins with the audience and what they need. Um, and, and my objective for that has to match, has to map directly to that need. And then I craft the message uh, and, and activities and everything accordingly to meet that objective so that I'm meeting that audience need. Yeah, I appreciate that. And that is so true. Actually, one of my workshops when I teach and train on public speaking, I make that very point. And when people buy my course, they actually will get that in my course that it's not about you, it's about your audience. Absolutely. And I've found that I've taken the same keynote speech and I've had to adjust it based on the audience I'm speaking with. Absolutely. And so it, it, in a very simple form, you can't go to, let's say, uh, Michigan and forget you're in Michigan and start talking about how awesome Ohio State is. <laughs> you just can't do that, right? <laughs> You've committed the same message, but you yeah. have it like that. <laughs> right, yeah. So, you uh, let, me, let me ask this, Mark, before we, we let you go for now. In terms of the audience, what are some tips or what would you like to leave the audience with today? Let's say they're interested in learning more about speaking or they're interested in learning more about how to become a podcaster. What, what would be some advice you would leave them? The thing that I think gets in our, in our way uh, in, terms of, in terms of speaking or podcasting, for that matter, is thinking that you're going to connect with 100% of your audience, which is patently false. 
<laughs> and I think that we, we, as, we as speakers or even aspiring speakers, we need to let that go. Right. We, need to, we need to know that, guess what? Which is 80% 80 of, of, of the, the audience is already tuned out. You're, you're, maybe, you're gonna reach maybe 20%, you know, maybe 1% will actually reach out to you and say, hey, great job. You know, and less than 1% will actually do something with what you say. Yeah. So it's a really, really small percentage <laughs> so that, you're, that you're actually reaching. But what you're doing is you're scattering seeds. That's w- what you're doing. You can't have the, you don't put the pressure on yourself that you need to reach 100% of your audience because it just won't, statistically, it just will not happen. So, so take the pressure off yourself, right? You know, it's, you know, let that go and, and really just focus on the audience, focus on the need and deliver to those people who are actually going to pay attention. Now, don't get me wrong. Don't like, you know, just phone it in. Right. But, but, you know, take the pressure off yourself. Cause I think that we, that we put all this pressure on ourselves to perform and, you know, you know, this, this isn't the state of the union, you know, or this isn't the, 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 a political party's national convention where you really need to nail this the first time, right? Um, you know, you're, you're, you're probably going to have other opportunities to speak in your lifetime uh, right. if, if all goes well. So I would say take the pressure off, you know, of yourself that, you know, it's, you're, you're reaching just a, a, a finite uh, percentage in your audience. Um, and, and don't, 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 don't sweat too much. I got it. I appreciate that, Mark. Um, I, I've got to ask you this question. I, I remember just threw this out there saying, yeah. based on what's going on with our country, the health pandemic, the social challenges, what yeah. do you feel are the most compelling topics people need to hear today? Oh, gosh. I know it's broad. I mean, you could paint a brush on it, but just maybe yeah. one or two. One thing we all need to really pay attention to the most important topic today, I believe is critical thinking because we live in an age and make, let's make, I'm going to make no bones about it. We live in an age of disinformation where we have great difficulty telling fact from fiction, news from fake news, truth from lie. And and it's, they're virtually indistinguishable from one another today. We need to be able to, to look at what we see, what we take in, and, and put it through a series of filters that, that really ask critical questions about that information. Who's behind that? What's their agenda? Wh- what do I think about this? Does this resonate? Is this good for me? Uh, you know, so we, I, be- I absolutely believe the most important thing that we all need to focus on right now is critical thinking. Even, even in, in our time of, of, of social upheaval, um, we really need to think about and, and put it into a reasoned and objective perspective. And, and that's what, that's what I, I've tried to do with my, with my podcast and bring on different perspectives to provide, to provide context. But don't believe everything you see. Yeah. That's, I, I, you know, just in terms of you know, what's the most important topic? I can give you a, a litany of them, but I will say the most important right now for, for the entire world is critical thinking. I love that, Mark, and I think that's so true. And I will tell you, there have been countless conversations I've had on what's going on in our country, what we could do in our companies. And the most important thing I've, I've learned in all this is we're, we've got to have dialogue. But we yes. got to have dialogue and an yes. openness of mind, and it comes from what you're saying, critical thinking. We've got to be able to challenge our thinking. We've got to be able to put put out there that we've got to stretch our thinking. And this is so important. It reminds me of the time where you could say, well, no one can ever break 10 seconds in a, in a 100 meter. No one can break 10 seconds. Right? You have to expand and say, yes, you can. Change your technique. Change your strategies. Change the, change the technology. And right. so we did. And so we have to be able to change the way we look at everything by expanding our mindset, by asking questions, being inquisitive, right? Being a student. And that's where we're going to go. So I love that you said that. And that's so true, Mark. Um, For our group, Mm -hmm. how can they find out more about Mark Bottrell? Where can they find you? How can they reach you if they need to get a hold of you? How can they stay in touch with your podcast? Give us every platform. Tell us how we can do that. I'm... 
super easy to find online. You can, you can reach me at my, you can find me on my website. That's where I host everything at markabotros.com. Uh, I'm on Instagram, uh, same, same handle, uh, Twitter, LinkedIn. Uh, I, I have a profile there. Uh, here on Facebook, you can reach out to me. Um, and the, you can actually Google the Life Works podcast. And it's Life Works, it's two words. And, and you can actually find me on, on Google that way uh, on iTunes. Yeah, and uh, I've already subscribed to Mark's Life Works podcast. I hope all of you guys do that as well. And this is not going to be the last time, Mark. As a matter of fact, he's agreed to come on as a guest on my podcast in a, in a, in a future episode. And so we definitely want to continue to encourage each other. Mark and I go back years, guys. And I tell you, I'm impressed. He's a great singer as well. Uh, it, it's too bad we don't have the time. I could put him on the spot to sing something for him. But this is who he is. He's a professional through and through. He's passionate about what he does. I'm grateful for your time to be here. And I look forward to hearing more about you and your, your work, Mark. Thank you, Dave. It's been an incredible pleasure to be with you. Thank you. And awesome. thank you, everybody. <laughs> Well, guys, it's a pleasure having Mark here today. I look forward to having more of you on. We want to hear your story. We want to know what you're passionate about. We want to know why you are doing what you're doing and how you can use your voice to continue to shape our people and our organizations. Keep speaking, guys, no matter what you do. Thanks again, guys. Thanks again, Mark. We'll talk to you later.